Hello everyone, welcome to Tactica Imperialis and to today's video. Today is episode 11 of A Town Called Malice by Warhammer Age of Sigmar Hobby Project. I got to buy some Age of Sigmar artwork because I got the Black Library calendar. Um, yes, that was very cool. So, today we're going to be bringing you, as is kind of typical for the second half of this series, one unit and one hero today. So we've got a nice bulky unit, um, which is going to be allowing me to discuss something I've discussed before in this series, and probably bulk out the um, like primary elements of my army. And then we have a hero that I sort of got on a bit of a whim, uh, but that I really think could have some fun applications for the army going forward, and also helps me contribute toward completing some uh, battalions. Because the one thing I've noticed whilst I've been doing this build is I've really not built around battalions at all. Battalions are quite common in Age of Sigmar. You use them as deployment speed-ups. Uh, you use them as just rules buffs because that's what they generally are, even if they are quite expensive. Um, and the way I've built my army basically does not allow me to take almost any battalions at all because the uh, Warrior Chamber battalions, the Vanguard Wing, the Devastation of Brotherhood, uh, and also the Lords of the Storm, all require heroes with wings, so all require wings. So prosecutors are very, very common, and you also have the Knights of Xeros and Venator, who come up quite a lot. And I don't have those, because as I've stated multiple times, they'll just break if I try and transport them back to England when all this is over. So they're not really an option. I haven't got ether wings for the same reason, so I can't build half of the Vanguard uh, battalions, which have Vanguard Raptors in, almost always come with ether wings. Um, and just between one thing and another, I can barely build any battalions. The only one I can build is the Vanguard Angelos Conclave, and to do that, I'm running it at bare minimum, so I'm not getting half of its benefits. So I'm trying to get my way towards completing a couple of battalions, and I'll address those either in this part or in the next part. I think probably in the next part, I'll do a lot of talking about that because I've picked up a couple of extra units that I can complete a battalion with, and I'll introduce them there and we can talk about that. So you've got an extra part for the series, guys. Yay. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, that's all for the future state. As I say, one unit, one hero that will allow me to talk about some things going forward. Um, I should also address that while it's not the first video I've released since, um, this is the first time I probably get to talk about 15,000 subscribers because in the Adepticon video, I didn't really want it to get in the way. Um, and law videos, same thing. So here I can say, Thank you so, so much for 15,000 subscribers. What on earth is that all about? <laughs> 15,000! 15,000! We're almost halfway to the magic number of this of the hobby community, which is, of course, 40k. It's just utterly crazy. Um... So, are we going to be doing anything 15k? I don't know. I'm hoping so, but I can't promise it. Uh, I was hoping to get a battle report um, at the time of recording yesterday. It'll be about a week ago uh, by the time you're watching this video. But that fell through. Um, but I'm hoping to speak to uh, one of the two local stores here in Grenoble and say, can I put on a massive, like, 3,000, 4,000 point battle report, please? Because the army will be at 4,000 points by then. And I kind of want to do a massive battle report, even if AOS kind of sort of breaks a bit at high sizes. I kind of just want to do it anyway. So you get to see the whole army on the tabletop and all of that fun stuff. So it's a bit of a watch this space. And if it does fall through and I can't make it happen, I will do a massive AOS battle report when I get back to England. Although that means you would have to wait until July. And for that, I do apologize. So I will do something but I may not be able to do it very quickly and it may end up being rolled into 20,000 if we have a stupidly crazy good three months, though I doubt it. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say on that. Just thank you so much again for 15,000. I really appreciate it, especially with uh, the way things have been this year. It's been a little bit different. I haven't always been able to get all the content I want, but you really seem to have stuck with the channel and I really do appreciate that. So, without any further ado, we'll start with the unit as we often do in these things where we do unit and hero. We'll do those and then we'll do the hero and I hope you enjoy them. Both. Let me know what you think in the comments below and if you want to see it, the French version will of course be out tomorrow. So, let's get to it. 
All right, so here is our unit for today. It is another 10 Vanguard Hunters, this time coming from the Vanguard Brotherhood box set. Honestly, these guys have been a, a long time coming. I've been meaning to get these guys done for quite a while, um, and I've now got them done. So I have 20 Vanguard Hunters now finished uh, for the army, plus there is another five for uh, Blight War, which I can add to the army, and you'll see those pretty soon, I suspect. However, this unit today is, well, there's not much I can say about them that I haven't said before, because all the way back in the second episode, I added my first 10 Vanguard Hunters to the army, and I discussed a lot of the things that these guys have. So, I'd had the weapon comparison, or I did swords versus axes, I did the whole discussion about that. So, there's only so much I can say here, but I do want to discuss this unit now, because I have learned a few things, hopefully. So starting off with the paint scheme, you'll notice immediately that much like the Vanguard Raptors that we saw uh, quite recently with the long strike crossbows, these guys have changed their tabard colour from red to blue. As I've said before, in a single chamber, uh, or a conclave or whatever, no retinue can be identical. Uh, sorry, no two retinues can be identical. I.e. the belt buckle has to change, the tabard colour has to change, something has to change. And just like with the raptors, where I changed their tabard from red to blue, I changed the tabard of these ten hunters from red to blue, because they realistically cannot uh, form a unit together. I know probably in terms of gameplay mechanics, they can. I think the rules do allow you to take both in the same unit, but I'm a bit of a purist, so I won't be doing that. So these guys are a separate unit, there's ten of them, and they've got the blue tabards. Now you can take units of up to 15, so if I get 5 more Axemen then they'll have blue, if I get 5 more Swordsmen they'll have red, uh, but when I get into a third unit, if that ever happens, uh, sorry, if I get past 30 Hunters basically, I will have to denote a third colour, but that's not a problem for the moment, that's a problem for the future, whatever the future may hold. Uh, these guys, as I already mentioned, are armed with the Shock hand axes, which is the alternate weapon option. So instead of two attacks hitting on threes, wounding on fours in melee, they are two attacks hitting on fours, wounding on threes. So statistically, they're absolutely identical to the Storm Saber, just they swap the hit and the wound roll. You still get, on average, one in six attacks through. And both no rend damage one, in case that wasn't clear. Um, so the difference realistically is in terms of modifiers. I'm not going to go through the maths again because maths can get boring if I do it too many times for some people. So I won't say any more than, yeah, you just um, get small variance depending on which whether you're getting buffs to hit, minuses to hit, re-rolls um, of ones or sixes, and things like that. Just slightly modify which weapon is better. But I've said from the start, I wanted to have uh, 10 of each. I wanted to have enough so that I could take both units all the time and just run the two side by side. So I'd always know uh, what I was doing, I always have options. I generally run this unit in two units of five when I deploy them on the battlefield because I need to fill up battle line choices, uh, and if I'm not taking liberators and judicators, then my hunters are doing that because I have Lord of Keylor as my general. Um, and for that reason, I have two primes. So you have this prime here, uh, who's on the tree base, and you have this prime here, who is the nearest of the classic prime. So he's stood on the base of the little lion knee pad, uh, and he's armed with a pistol, uh, uh, with the bolt stone pistol, and he's reloading it. Uh, that is as near to the classic Vanguard Hunter Prime as I'm going to get, because obviously that classic model also comes with a bare head, and I don't paint skin uh, in this army, so nope. Absolutely nope. Uh, and it's something I've tried to do um, with all the models, is have the astral compasses and primes on different legs. So... On my other unit, the Prime is on the running legs, which are these guys' legs here. Uh, and the Astral Compasses are on a set of tree legs, and then I think they're on these legs as well. They're on these two sets of legs. So in this unit, um, in order to mix it up, I had the Primes on the legs that the Compasses were on, and then I've got the Compasses on other sets of legs. And in the 25 uh, unit, where there's five more that I've got to add, I'm doing the same thing. So the fifth compass will be on uh, this set of legs, this set of legs right here, so this guy is one of the reloading guys, uh, and the prime will either be on this set of legs, uh, in fact it will be on this set of legs, because 
I can't use that as that legs because I've only got one set and that's what the compass is going on and I can't repeat so we're going on this set of legs uh, but you'll see that uh, in the future uh, I just I thought I'd mention that because it's a little thing I wanted to do is, is I was worried about um, variety in this unit because it's not a very um, kit bash friendly kit with the fact that the cloaks are sculpted to specific torsos and the like it's not bad uh, because all the torsos are front and back separate and then you can put them on different legs so there is plenty of customization but the arm sets are also kind of locked so you've just got to you've just got to roll with it a bit and try and force variety into the unit i've done that as best i can uh but just something that i should point out for anyone who wants to get vanguard hunters you can struggle with variety if you just build them out of the box and don't stop and think while you're doing it uh, as I said in gameplay terms, I usually guys, uh, run these guys in two fives, uh, hence the two primes. And these are usually my astral compass users. So these guys will be used to flank, or I'll use them with the Lord of Kilo's command ability very early, so as they can uh, dash forward and snag an objective quickly, or threaten a unit. Because by Vanguard Hunters doesn't do very much. That's the downside. Um, because they're going to be battle line troops, you have to think they can't do too much for their cost um and they are very very meh in terms of damage output i mean four attacks threes and fours when in melee because we count their shooting attack as well that's pretty good but against decent armor save units um which is all i seem to run up against between seraphon and chaos warriors it can be tough to get any damage and when you've only got five guys you're basically just doing plink damage and plink damage is nice but it's not it's not great. So I mainly use these guys as sort of uh, sneaky objective cappers, or uh, maybe I'll use them to threaten a hero, like a wizard, as an assassin unit. Something like that is what I'll generally use them for. Um, and that leads on with the whole astral compassing into what I'm going for with battalions of this army. I discussed this a little bit interesting in the introduction. Uh, you'll see it a lot clearer with the next model I'm adding, and in a upcoming parks i've bought more stuff you'll see that i'm going to complete this battalion so i just want to mention it quickly here and that is the storm vortex garrison i won't go into loads of detail but basically it contains two units of vanguard hunters that can bring back dead units from the battalion as reserves effectively so when the vanguard hunters are set up in pursuit uh, when they arrive, you may also set up a unit from this garrison that has already been destroyed. So it could be paladins, it could be liberators, or it could be heroes. Um, so you do need to think about reserve points if you're playing matched play, but this generally allows you to get units back on the board using your Vanguard Hunters. And that's why I quite like, uh, quite like running in five sometimes in that one scenario, because you don't spend too much on your reserve points when you've already got to keep points off the board as reserve points to um, bring stuff back from the dead. It's just something to consider. So that's what I'm working toward, and I'll explain a little bit more with the next model, and you'll see it again in the next part of the part after. Um, so that's all there really is to say, because as I've said, I don't have much more to say on Vanguard Hunters, because I've already covered them in a previous part. Uh, the only thing I've changed about the paint scheme is the tabards, the cloaks have stayed the same. In fact, I'll just uh, tip the prime here to prove it. Still a red cloak. Still uh, dry brush white on the back. Still a red top knot because that's what the army spot color. I've not changed a lot. I've just changed the color of the tabard and belt. Uh, and then I've done attempted to do some decent posing to just keep unit variety. That's all I've done. So that is the Vanguard Hunters. Um, and they are just going to be very useful for the army. Just to give me more battle line options and just general plink damage, um, maneuverability, etc., etc. But they're not the interesting part of this episode. Uh, that is the character that we're adding. And if you know the Storm Vortex Garrison, then you might be able to guess at what at least you've got a 50 50 chance of guessing what it might be. So let's get to that. And here is the hero that we have added into the army a Lord Castellant. A really, really nice model uh, with a lot of nice little, well, actually, one nice little ability. So, the model is painted in the typical fashion, so red cloak with a purple exterior. I've sort of taken that from my Knight Questor, Gavriel Shawheart, I'm never sure what I want to call him, uh, and done that. Uh, red lined is typical for the army, see the Vanguard Hunters we saw like a 30 seconds ago. Um, 
We've got the massive Castellans, Castellans halberd, not Castellan, Castellans halberd, with random bit in the middle to allow with better grip, I suppose. Um, you've got a lot of detail on the uh, scale, I think it's scale mail somebody told me it was many, many parts ago, um, covered by a whack-off, almost metallic tabard, an hourglass, a huge symbol, and then he's carrying, of course, the warding lantern, which is his main gimmick. Um, the scrolls on either side of the lantern, I painted in the same colour as the shoulder pads. One, I wanted more purple, because I like having purple on my Stormcast models, and two, it's obviously not an actual scroll, because there's no way they'd make a scroll look like that around a lantern, you numpties. Hence, I've done it with uh, purple with gold trim in the same style as the shoulder pads, and also because I think the official Lord Castellan model has it in like blue and white, which are the sort of edge colours of the Stormcast uh, Hammers of Sigma. So I've just sort of done it that way. Oh, there's a bit of grey on the inside. I'm going to turn the model this way. Also, see that the. I got my finger out of the way. There's a lot of gold on the legs. Uh, there's actually a lot of gold plating. I, I painted it that way. I think that's quote unquote correct. Um, so purple indent, and I should probably touch this up. Uh, and then gold for the main planning. So it's sort of like paladins in a way. Uh, lots of extra gold. I'm just going to put more of that down there because you can see a little bit neater then. Um, so, that's the paint scheme, and it's a really pretty model. Again, it's one of those models where you, you start painting and it looks fine, and then you put the gold on, and you just go, wow. It's another one of those models. Um, same as the Knight Questor, the Lord Celestine from Draco. When you add the gold to the model, it just elevates it from the basic scheme you were working on. I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm being really, really self self-promoting and cocky and stuff when I say that, and I don't want to sound like that, but I love it when you add the gold to this paint scheme because it just elevates the model massively. So, that's uh, all the fun of the fair with the paint scheme, but uh, also, by the way, paint this thing in as many sub-assemblies as possible. It's a flipping nightmare if you don't, so sub-assemblies all the way. And just final point. So, the Lord Castlet on the tabletop is as follows. He costs 100? I think it's 100. 100 points, which is about average. He has six wounds, a five inch move, a three up save, and bravery nine, nobody cares. Uh, he has a Castellan's Halberd, which is three attacks with a two inch reach, with hit on threes, wound on threes, with one rend, and damage two. That, for a support hero, is actually quite good. Like I say, for a support hero. It's way better than the Lord Relictor, who is four attacks at damage one, uh, by comparison. The Lord Veritant admittedly has a point of rend, uh, sorry, has an extra attack on top of this, but less reach, but his um, abilities are a bit more niche. And the actual Lord Celestant um, has damage one and an extra attack, and then two additional attacks that are just pings, uh, as well as his uh, shooting attack. So it's very, very solid for a hero, uh, the Lord Castellan. And I, I do consider him a support hero rather than an out and out general, mainly because he doesn't have a command ability, but there you go. Um, he's also armed with the Warding Lantern, which is this thing right here. Now, what that does is buff the flip out of things. In your hero phase, um, pick either a Chaos unit or a Stormcast Eternal unit within 12 inches of the Lord Castellan. Yes, it's specified to be anti-chaos, so this will not work uh, on the offense against destruction or death. Bear that in mind. If you choose a Chaos unit, uh, deal a mortal wound. If you choose a Chaos Demon unit, deal D3 mortal wounds. So it's effectively a... Against a demon, it's an arcane bolt on a stick that's an auto cast. Uh, against other chaos units, it's just a ping. So it's quite good for picking off uh, ice, uh, heroes that are on their last wound before they get to attack again. It's good for maybe taking the last wound off a cavalry model that's in a unit. So let's say it's a five wound cavalry unit. Uh, you'd plink off the last one and then there are a guy down, which is really, really useful. It's kind of nice like that, but you can't use it uh, against destruction and death. However, if you pick a Stormcast unit, is it does say Stormcast, not Order, so you can't use this much on your allies, just another thing to bear in mind. Uh, add plus one to all save rolls for the unit until your next hero phase. In addition, until your next hero phase, if you make a save roll of a seven or more, 
One model in the unit heals a wound. So, would you like a hero with a 2 plus save that also heals every time they roll a 6? Yes? Good. Because that's what the Lord Castellan does. Um, apply this also to paladins, cavalry, and you get incredibly tanky units that also occasionally heal. You want to put this on your biggest units possible. Uh, Star Drakes, Drake Oaths, General Heroes, Paladins, Paladors to some extent, but they have a slightly worse save, I think. Do they have a worse save? I think they have a, yeah, they have a worse save, so maybe not the best example. But generally you want to put this on things with a 3-up save, or a 4-up save will do. Um, even better combo, put it on a model with shields, because shields are generally reroll ones to save. Therefore, on the really tough units, it'll be threes or twos, re-rolling ones. Um, so that's that's really, really, really tanky. Really tanky. Now, what's the nastiest thing? You, uh, oh, actually, I should point out as well. The healing will only kick off if you roll a seven. So if your opponent has rend, you can't roll a seven. So therefore, if your opponent has rend, they do counter the healing. I should point that out. At least that's how I think it's interpreted. If it's if that's wrong, let me know in the comments. But rules as interpreted by me, rend will cancel out the healing effect. Something to consider. However, I think the best individual unit to put this on is possibly the Lord Celestine on Draco. Why? Here's why. His shield um, is really powerful. So if you you reroll save rolls of one, great. So put the healing on two up re-rolling ones. You pass the re-roll, each enemy unit within three inches takes a mortal wound. That's just really, really useful. Um, and also, if you roll a six plus, he heals. Which is a two plus save re-rolling ones cavalry unit with seven wounds that also can regen. This is also kind of true for the Drake of Cavalry, but they don't have the mortal wound trick. So it's um, it's not as important. And the other one that I was thinking of that isn't in the uh, battle tone is Gabriel Shawhart, because I think he has an ability of on a six um, do something. I think it's on a six do a mortal wound after uh, for his save. Um, so that will now trigger on a five, which is lovely. And if you do still roll a six, not only do you do that ping, but you also heal. Uh, do I have his? I do. I have his. I have his war scroll here. That's in Italian. Um, oh no, he's got the same shield as the Lord uh, Salsam Drake. It's not just sixes, so it's just all fast saves. Okay, so it's it's not like... Um, I don't think you have any abilities that are saves of on a six do something. That might be for other armies, but that makes these guys really, really dangerous if they're buffed up. So obviously you want to put this on, as I said, tanky heroes, tanky infantry or cavalry. And just watch your opponent cry as they fail to kill anyone. Until they get a lot of rend and then it doesn't really help. Um, ultimate super mega doom combo is to stick this guy with the Lord Relictor. Because then not only are you potentially healing off your saves, you're also then healing off the uh, healing storm prayer uh, that the Lord Relictor has. And you can just create the ultimate tank. Admittedly, with the ability to fall back from melee, this isn't ideal, but you can create a truly horrific tar pit out of paladins or cavalry if you're against certain models, like maybe you could probably hold an Archeon or an Agash maybe for a, a round or two by just keeping guys topped up and buffing their save. I don't know, I'm, I'm maybe exaggerating, but you can tar pit beat sticks and you can turn your beat sticks into the ultimate tank as well as beat sticks. So... Very, very useful for 100 points. And this model also goes into the um, Storm Vortex Garrison I was discussing earlier. So let me just give you the full lowdown on that. So that is going to be a Lord Castellant, a Lord Relict, sir. No, hang on. It's a Lord Castellant, a Knight Herald, or sorry, a Knight Vexilor, two units of Liberators, two units of Paladins, and two units of Vanguard Hunters. So I'm currently short a Knight Vexilor and a unit of Paladins of finishing that. Um... So you don't hit battle shot within eight inches of your heroes, which is good because it means you just don't run. Uh, so it, fall, it kind of encourages you to blob up so that your castle will always be useful and your vexilla will always be useful and your herald will always be useful. And then you have the Vanguard Hunter ability I discussed very quickly earlier. 
Um, so if a unit of Vanguard Hunters is set up in pursuit when they arrive, you may also set up a unit from this garrison that has already been destroyed within six inches of a table edge, more than seven inches from the enemy, and within six inches of the Vanguard Hunters. So if you have reserve points going uh, because you've left them off the table, you can make, uh, let's say, your Paladins come back or your Liberators come back. It's 200 point battalion. So the army all in is uh, about 1500 points plus whatever you leave off as reserve. So you might want to leave off, say, 300 points so you can bring back um, either 15 liberators, so a 10 and a 5, or maybe 10 liberators and a hero, or paladins and a hero. I don't know. You've got options uh, for what you want to leave off the board, and you can just top up with extra bits. Something like. Um, just something that's really good value generation would be good. Um, so yeah, that's something to consider. Finally, with the Lord Castle, there is the Griffhound synergy, uh, which is a little bit abstract, but it exists. You just find Griffhounds somewhere. So yes, Griffhounds also get four attacks instead of two if the target unit is within three inches of a Lord Castle. So if you have a Castle around, Griffhounds do more work. Small thing, but it's a thing worth noting. So that's... Excuse the car horn. So that is the Lord Castellant, and that is the end of this part of a town called Malice. Maybe not the longest of parts that I've done, but um, I hope that you get to see now where I want the army to go next, because I've practically rounded off the Vanguard element. I've just got the units of Hunters and Paladors from Blightwater to do, and then I am finished with that, because I'm not doing the Ether Wings at this moment. Um, but because I want to fill out battalions, I'm thinking of looking at the Storm Baltic's garrison as something that I can block out. Um, so I need more paladins and a Vexilor, uh, but I'm working on that. Um, and they'll hopefully be in the next part or the part after. And yeah, that's sort of the rough plan is to try and fill out some battalions. Uh, maybe bulk up the Liberators for that battalion so that I've got two units of ten. Maybe... I don't know what's bugging that person. Uh, maybe just look into something like that, and then there's the Ether Strike Force, though I'll need Knight Venator and Knight Azeros for that, uh, and Ether Wings. So there's a plenty of options I can go into from there. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. This has been Tatsuka Imperialis, and this has been episode 12 of the town. What? 12? 11? I can't even remember what part this is. Anyway, thank you for watching this episode of a town called Malas, my Age of Sigma Hobby Project for the Stormcast Eternals. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and goodbye.